Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. We're coming to you live. Well, not really live, but live in the OMP laboratory. We're doing this because of my sister. She said when things get boring for her, be sure to do a field trip. So we're here on a field trip into the OMP uh, laboratory. And we're going to get a chance to talk with Dr. Ashley Mullen, the director of OMP today. So I'm really excited about that. And to learn all about the OMP program here at Baylor College of Medicine. So come with me and let's go see what's going on. So this is Dr. Ashley Mullen, who is the director of the OMP program, which is orthotics and prosthetics. And I'm going to ask her a series of questions to test her on whether she really knows what she's doing. That's no, I actually, we have the best OMP program in the nation. But uh, so tell me what, what is an orthotic and prosthetics and what, what, what <laughs> tell, what's the difference between an orthotic and a prosthetic? That's a great question. So hey, in, Billy, in, that was a great question. Janet? Great question, go ahead. An orthosis <laughs> is a custom brace uh, that is designed to support someone who has a neuromuscular condition, which is resulting in a limb that uh, isn't functioning properly, or a spine. Uh, we even do interventions around the cranium. Okay. Um, a prosthesis is an artificial limb. So one right. is replacing yeah. a limb that is missing, and okay. the other is supporting a limb or a portion of the body that's not working or, or functioning properly or needs stabilization. So it, so I have a thing in my foot here. Yes. Is that a, That's an orthotic. A foot orthosis. Ortho that's what I got. Yes. I got one of those, and it helps, by the way. Good. <laughs> I have old person's <laughs> metatalgia or whatever you call it. Uh, so uh, how big a problem is, like, limbs... Uh, limb replacement right now because of all the wars and everything going on. Yeah, so interestingly, in zones where there's military conflict, the number one cause of amputation, of course, is trauma. Right. Um, and we're seeing that exponentially in the Ukraine and the Middle East. Um, in countries like the United States, the leading cause is complications due to chronic disease, such like as, uh, diabetes, diabetes, vascular disease. Yep. So uh, one in about 190 Americans is living with limb loss, and some experts believe that that number is going to double by 2050. So this is a huge sort of unrecognized problem, uh, what are you, what's your program doing to sort of address this nationally? Well, one of the biggest things that we're doing is we are educating and preparing very well-prepared, skilled clinicians who are going to be able to meet the need of patient care, the demand that's there. Um, so our profession is incredibly small. There's only about 6,500 certified clinicians in the United States. That seems kind of low for the need. Absolutely. So by 2032, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts a 15% increase in the number of jobs. It's about 1,500 jobs. So oh, wow. when you think about the size of our profession, that's a pretty large increase in the demand. How many students do you take? We are actually matriculating 26 students okay. in June, which is two more than we've been able to matriculate in the past. And we're actually really excited about the new Health Science Education Building. Yes, um, where are you going to be? We'll have capacity for up to 32 students. That's great. And how many applicants do you get? We typically get around, our average is 100 applicants every year. So it's, people are beginning to recognize that it's a real profession to go into. Exactly. We're in the midst of a national professional awareness campaign mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people don't even realize that this is a healthcare career. Right. Um, U.S. News and World Report actually just ranked us number 16. How about in, as an orthotics or prosthetics program, we are very different in what ways? Yes. Uh, we are known because we were the first program in the country to integrate the clinical residency into the degree, and that was right. really built upon the success of the other programs here in the School of Health Professions. Mm -hmm. um, I think what sets us apart is that the foundation and the education we provide in that first year of the program allows our students to go across the country to their residency rotations and really excel. We continue that education throughout that residency period and we're with them from zero to board exam. Yeah, I think that people don't realize that in, in the medicine, for example, we integrate the clinical and the educational piece, but in OMP in the past, they were separate. And right. so part of, I think, the strength of the program that you run is that they integrate the two, so they come out actually clinically trained and ready to go. Exactly, yeah. So, it, well, you know, there's a lot of technical advances in all of medicine. What are the cool technical advances happening in OMP programs? Our students are actually here to show if we can... All right, we have students way. here to show. Now, now, here they are, wasting time as students normally do. Megan is a faculty member um, who, in concert with our assistant director, Jeremy Sherman, worked in her upper limb orthotics curriculum this fall to integrate digital scanning and modification into our curriculum. So the first thing our students do is they take an evaluation of a patient, they conduct a patient history, assess range of motion, muscle strength, and then to capture the shape of the limb, they may now use their smartphone device 
which is equipped with an app, which can actually scan the limb and create a digital file, which is the shape of the limb, versus in the past, this would have to be something that would be physical, so with fiberglass wrap or plaster of Paris. Look at that! Oh my goodness, that actually works. He's got a few extra fingers there. <laughs> he moved a little. Yeah, he's got eight fingers. Yeah. And thankfully, as the iPhones have gotten more and more advanced and smartphones in general, the scanning capabilities have also increased with that. And so now you're able to just use your phone instead of having to get a whole separate scanner, which is a little bit more costly. So this, so this can make then a, a prosthetic without having to do a whole. Correct. So the old school. The old thing. Fiberglass yeah, this dude. Mold. Yeah. So the students actually took that straight to their laptop. So basically when we scan, we take the scan, put that into the computer and do all of our digital modifications there. But then when it comes time to actually fabricate the device, we have a few different options. Okay. So one of the options is carving the model out of foam. And then what we would do is kind of traditionally form the plastic over it. Another option, which is always very exciting, is 3D printing. And so that's something that okay. is up and coming. And Kylie, that is what her wrist handle So that's a 3D printed? Yeah. Wow. So we could skip. That it. looks a lot cooler than, the, than yeah. the foam thing. <laughs> if you can go straight to the 3D printed, then you kind of cut out a step. And but look at this. Um, this is amazing because this is 3D printed, right? Yes, it is. What's unique is, is 3D printing is just a different manufacturer. It's the same same things we've been doing. It's just a different way to produce the resource constrained regions, whether it's a war zone or space. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, issues are going to happen, and people are going to need to be able to manufacture orthotics and prosthetics. Exactly. And so, having a 3D printer, there's no question there will be a 3D printer on the when, on the Mars mission. Yes. Not to mention any place we go in the field, probably it's nice. Can you take, are there portable versions of this or um, not really? Probably not much more than what you see here. Um, if you're printing uh, this size thing, like, yeah, yeah. That we would need. Good. You can take a picture of the, of the students, they look really bored. Oh, okay. Sleep, be sure to get that person. <laughs> Lily inspired. <laughs> I love the hats. And Billy Steger made this one. That's so awesome. Billy's already got. Billy gets an A for everything. Isn't that cool? Well, how cool was that? We got to see the prosthetic people in action. Uh, anyway, so uh, I'm going to end today with a couple of shout outs. First and foremost, remember the eclipse is coming on April 8th. Uh, if you want to watch it, you need to go to Kerrville, Texas. <laughs> it's the only. No, it's going all across. Uh, the United States, but we will be able to see in Houston uh, about 90% uh, total eclipse. Now, if you want to observe it, remember you have to wear special filters. I got one right here, and it has it'll say uh, suitable for for viewing, <laughs> but there are a lot of fake ones out there. So you have to look for the ISO number 12312-2 to make sure that it's officially okay to look through in the sun. And by the way, if you're going to use your uh, cell phones to photograph that you also need a filter over the lens so uh, that'll be fun we'll, uh, we'll check it out knowing uh, knowing our luck it'll be a cloudy day and we won't see it that that's what happened the last time we had uh, uh, an eclipse also tomorrow is doctor's day I feel a little bit silly I'm about to tell you that you should recognize all of us doctors but you know it's nice and of course they don't have it on a regular day because nobody gets a day off they give it on a Saturday but uh, it's, you know, thanks to all the doctors out there who are taking care of patients, uh, particularly the doctors at Baylor College of Medicine who are so dedicated to our mission and to our patients and our community. And finally, of course, uh, this Sunday is Easter. Uh, for those of you celebrating Easter, have a wonderful Easter Sunday. I will be rolling out the eggs and hiding them from my grandchild, JP. Anyway, have a wonderful weekend. I can't wait to see you next week.